and she's on on my mind like all all the time take a deep breath seriously right now take a deep breath now if your shoulders did this then you're already robbing yourself of 25 to 50 percent of your vocal power before you even begin to sing quick water down anatomy lesson the diaphragm it's the muscle that resides within our rib cage. It's the main muscle that allows us to breathe. So it's like a, like a suction or a pump. You can kind of think of it that way. So when it moves down, it draws air into our lungs and we can breathe. When it moves up, it helps to release air or push air out. Air in, air out. You get the idea? Most singers that come to my studio for the first time utilize far too much of their accessory breathing muscles when inhaling. This means that you're already tight before you begin and you're only utilizing the upper portion of your lung capacity when most of your lung tissue is not only lower but also in the back. So it's a really inefficient use of your respiratory system. So the solution is to learn to breathe low and utilize the longer, stronger muscles of the torso to draw the breath in low into the lungs and help the diaphragm to expand, thus releasing the throat and releasing a whole bunch of tension. And eventually we can utilize this to also lower our larynx and release that as well, giving us more space and more vocal freedom and blah, blah, blah. One important note is that the goal right now is not necessarily to strengthen the diaphragm. The diaphragm has been working for as long as you've been born. It's the only way that we can breathe. So all breathing is diaphragmatic in the sense that the diaphragm has to move in order for us to breathe. So when we inhale, the diaphragm moves down, helping to draw air into the lungs. When we exhale, the diaphragm moves up. That action is happening 24 seven. So the goal is to maximize the diaphragm's movement and to free it, to liberate it. Because for most people, the diaphragm doesn't move as much as it should. So, by training the muscles that surround it, we can open the body up and allow for the full release of the diaphragm. Today's lesson is about the 360 degree breath. Mastering this breath will relax your throat, reduce nasality in your tone, help to blend your registers, and bring greater resonance. It will also aid in the protection of your voice and it will improve your range. It's fundamental and it's important for any singer of any voice type, of either sex, of any genre. If you use your voice professionally, you need to know this. And by golly, I'm using this hand a lot, but whatever, let's move on. We're gonna approach the main muscle groups that you should be using to breathe one by one, and then we're gonna tie it all together. If you practice this every day, it can become a permanent natural habit that you won't have to think about while singing. Let's start with the abdomen. I'm gonna to turn to the side so you can get a better look, but you can just stay where you are. We're gonna put our hands on our stomach, and instead of breathing like this, I want you to try to focus your breath to make your hand move forward like this. And then just let the breath out as normal. But I want you to really try to focus your breath and control it to where your stomach moves out, but your shoulders remain stable. I don't want this. No, it's... And inhale slowly. Let's do 10. Do it with me. Just try your best. Okay, ready? One. Two. Shoulders relaxed. Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. 
If that was difficult, feel free to pause the video and take as long as you need to get the hang out of feeling that movement in the abdomen from the breath. And remember, we're not muscularly moving the stomach, but we're breathing it out, okay? Now the whole stomach belly breathing thing is very normal amongst voice teachers and vocal students. And if you've taken voice lessons before, you've probably heard of it. But what often goes unnoticed is the back. It's just as important, if not more important. The back muscles have to release in a fashion similar to the abdominal, so you want to get a movement there. This will help to immediately release the throat and it also helps to release the diaphragm fully. It can be a lot more difficult than the abdomen, but be patient with yourself and practice. Apply some pressure with the palms of your hands on the kidney area and give yourself a focal point. Try to inhale against the pressure of your palms. So if you press in, well, not like that, but press in and try to inhale your palms off of you. Let's do 10. Ready? It helps if you kind of hunch over a little bit. Of course, this is horrible singing posture, but for the sake of trying to get this breathing thing down, you can hunch over a little bit. Think like an old man with a cane kind of thing. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, for you that might have been too fast, and that's okay, but just like I said with the other one, pause it, take your time, get the most out of that back breath. It's very important. Take as long as you need. The inhale can be much slower, like... And then relax. Or even slower than that if you need it to be. Take your time. You want to make sure that you fully expand. Also, you might notice that as your back expands with breath, you might feel your stomach kind of expanding. So, just uh, know that that's okay. It's totally fine. And before I have somebody pointed out, I know somebody's gonna be, um, somebody's gonna have to say it. Technically speaking, you can only fill the lungs with air. So you can't really, literally breathe into your stomach or breathe into your back. But when you do this properly, you'll have a felt sense of breathing into the stomach or breathing into the back. It'll feel as if you're doing that, okay? Lastly, we're gonna utilize the intercostal muscles, the muscles of your rib cage. Now, we're going to focus on the side ribs here, but keep in mind that the rib cage extends all the way up to the collarbone. So over time, this can help you to feel a sense of the chest opening up and releasing as well. So put your fingertips or your knuckles into your side ribs, and we're going to breathe out side to side, and then relax them, and breathe out side to side, and relax. And people always ask, is it okay if one rib goes out more than the other? That's typical, but eventually over time, you should start to feel like they both do that. This is so important too because the diaphragm attaches directly to the insides of the ribs. So in order for the diaphragm to fully release, the rib cage has to be, has to open up and be free and flexible, okay? So here or here, whatever's most comfortable, but let's do 10. Ready? And one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Excellent. Now you might notice that when we fully, fully expand the ribs, the stomach might draw in a little bit. That's okay for this part of the exercise. Mm -hmm.